In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you this really simple kind of 20s inspired makeup. I hope you enjoy. And I've also gone into a little bit of detail about the Rosalique Anti-Redness Primer. As always, everything I've used is listed in the caption of the video. So if you see the caption at the bottom, you can click to expand it. A full list of products will drop down, but by all means, please feel free to adapt some of these tips and suggestions for whatever you've already got in your makeup bag. To begin, I'm actually gonna do my base. And so I've got my hair right out of the way and I'm gonna start with a little bit of the It Cosmetics Confidence in a Cream. Um, my skin's quite dry today. And the nice thing about this is that it's very buttery. So any makeup that you put on top of it just glides over any of those dry patches really well. Now, because I'm a little bit more red today, I thought it'd be a really good time to use the Rosalique Anti-Redness Primer. If I had a pound for every time someone asked me about this, I would be a very, very wealthy girl. Um, in particular, Cindy, we were talking about this recently, so I thought I would use it with you. Um, to say on the very top, I'm going to put this on actually while I talk about it. I think Rosalique is great, but for me personally, I don't tend to gravitate towards this because... What this is designed to do, the green is going to help to take down any high colour and then it tints to kind of a golden colour so that it doesn't stay green on the skin per se. But like it sits somewhere in between a green colour corrector and a makeup item. And for me, if I'm using it just to colour correct and act as a makeup step, you're never going to convince me to use anything other than the It Cosmetics CC cream. So that's probably why I don't mention it as much. Because like, for example, and I think the key thing to remember with redness correctors is that we all want different things. If you want something quite lightweight that reduces the redness, that kind of sets to this more golden colour, then by all means, I think you'd really like this. But for me... I want something that reduces the redness, is more of a full coverage, available in lots of different shades rather than like one set colour, which is why I would gravitate towards the CC cream. And I don't want to be like pitting one against the other. I actually think they're very different products, but um, that's probably the main reason why I don't use it as often as I would use something like the CC cream. Now, that said, a couple of things I want to mention about this. It's really lightweight. So as I say, if your main concern, oh, I think I've put a bit much on there. Let me just make sure I've rubbed it in. If your main concern is to just reduce the redness without building lots of coverage, I think you might like this. Um, I've still got loads left on my hand. I've still relatively, I'm not going to use it perhaps on the forehead because even though I'm a little bit pink there, there's nothing I really want to thoroughly colour correct. Um, and I would say as well, use that as a primer and use something on top of it. So that in mind, I'm not going to use the CC cream over the top of it because I feel like that's done our CC job. I thought so that you could see it in action. I'd team it with my Face Atelier Ultra Foundation Pro and I'm going to use this actually on a sponge. The reason being, if this has got these kind of colour correcting properties in it, I want to layer the foundation on top rather than mix it all in together. I don't want any of the kind of green pigment to blend into this. I want them to sit separately, if that makes sense. Um, another thing while I remember, I would just like to say about the Rosalique is one of the main places that I see this is she's one of my favourite people to follow. This lovely makeup artist Freya uses this all the time and I think Freya is a great example of someone that can use that as a single step. Um, she does often layer it with foundation like I'm going to do now. But basically, if you want to see it in action and learn about it and how best to use it, I can't recommend following her enough. Um, I started following her years ago because I don't know if you've ever had a chance to listen, but I've got a podcast. It's called Beauty from the Heart. I haven't done a new series since I think it was 2020 now. And I will do one at some point. It's just not like forefront of my plans right now. But anyway... 
one of the episodes I had Sam and Nick Chapman on and Nick was saying that Freya is her friend and at this time, bearing in mind this episode was a few years ago, Freya was working at Fennec and you could go to her for a consultation across all of the brands. She wasn't with one set person, um, but she's so soothing to listen to. She does really beautiful makeups. They're really like polished and pretty and you'd feel glam in them but they're not too heavy, they're not difficult to follow, you feel like when you're watching her you could do them all yourself. Um, so she is a great one to follow full stop, but in particular for the Rosalique uh, kind of videos, I think you'd love her. Now, coming back to my Ultra Foundation Pro, which in fairness I've never used uh, over the Rosalique, so this is, we're all learning together. Um, this foundation, I bought this a while ago because I saw the Euphoria Makeup Trailer Tour on Allure and wanted to try some of the things that they use on the show. And honestly, it's one of the best things I've ever used. I really cannot recommend this enough. What I like about it is it gives quite a skin-like finish. Um, I love wearing it on myself. I haven't actually tried it on any clients. I tried it on my friend Emma actually and it looked lovely on her. Um, having only used it on myself, I just think it's fantastic. Now I'm going to use the tiniest bit there, but can you see what I mean? That it's kind of looks like skin. Um, a really, really lovely one. And by all means, like I hadn't heard of this. It's not something that I think you can pick up as easily in the UK. I ordered it either from Tilt Makeup or Guru Makeup Emporium. That's where I've been getting things recently. If I see them online and you can't necessarily pick them up in the shops in the UK. Um, I can't remember what my point was going to be. Oh yeah, but I put a video on TikTok about this. And I had lots of, um, I'm going to use the word disgruntled feedback from people going, yeah, I've been using this for years. This isn't new, like all this stuff. And like, I'm, I'm not saying it's new. I'm just saying I've just discovered it. And I thought I would share that it's really good. Um, so yeah, if it is something that you've been looking at or you've seen online yourself, that's where I um, would recommend in the UK that you can order things from that are sometimes a bit more harder to come across. Now, while that's still fresh and I've got my sponge, I'm going to use the Peaches and Cream Cream Bronzer. Um, I think I mentioned this in a video the other day. I've been obviously harping on about cream bronzers in the last few videos. This was my high street recommendation for you. Um, I always say this about peaches, that it's my high street recommendation, but it's not just because it's great value, like the products are actually wicked and it's just this amazing added bonus that they're great value. So if you want um, a nice kind of creamy, densely pigmented bronzer, it's coming up softer because I'm using the damp sponge here but this is absolutely beautiful. The next thing I'm going to do is literally just take a kind of like an angled brush and some setting powder, <laughs> the very last legs of the setting powder there. And I'm going to leave as much of the skin as fresh as possible, but I just want to focus on taking down some of the shine through the T-zone. Now I'm actually going to go fairly um, full with this because I'm going to use some powder eyeshadows. Now, in all honesty, I should have done my eyeshadows first. Um, but here we are, I haven't, and now I'm going to have to work around it. So I've just really gone to town on this powder. By the time we've finished, um, that will have softened again, and we'll hopefully have a bit more of a natural skin-like glow coming through, because look how much, in fairness, the sun's just gone in, so I think the um screen will have kind of gone out of focus a bit you'd be amazed actually uh let me just quickly do my eyebrows actually while i tell you this you'd be amazed at how much when you're filming the sun coming in or out can make things look completely different it's nowhere near as clear um so i think that was a bit of unfortunate timing okay i'm just going for quite um a soft brow today um, Sil, you'd said to me the other day, will I do a brow video? And I definitely will. I've written that down. But 
but I'm actually going to focus on eyeshadow today. So I'm going to quickly get through the brows so that I can move on to some um, eyeshadow tips. Now to begin my eyeshadow, I'm going to use the NARS Tinted Shadow Base. Um, this comes in various colours and essentially it's an eyeshadow primer that also kind of, you know, would act as your concealer, helps to... Um, go over any discoloration but this dries I should have got a brush before I um started this this dries to a really velvety matte finish now Law you said to me that your eyeliner is printing um in particular you've got more of a hooded eye shape and you're finding that it's smudging kind of on the upper lid if you experience any kind of smudging I'd really recommend this base it dries to almost like a clay finish and I'm going to use powders on top of this which again it's going to help to grip the powder but it really helps I would say to um, control oil and keep this eyelid space as matte as possible which in itself is going to help you with any um, transfer. There is a fantastic pro makeup artist with NARS, Vincent Ford. Honestly, like his reels, videos, he shares these really quick tips really up close. Again, can't recommend following him enough. I started following him. Um, I'm very lucky with my job. If like a brand launches something new, you'll often be on a Zoom or something to learn about it. And he was on this Zoom one day, it was a while ago. And I remember thinking like, this hour maybe of the Zoom, I'm just going to set this with some translucent powder. The hour of this Zoom, the amount of tips I'd learned was just unbelievable. Um, and like, if I thought that Zoom was good, I had no idea the TikToks and Reels and things I was going to have, so can't recommend him enough. Okay, one for you, Jojo. You asked me for a neutral palette with matte shades and lots of browns, and literally, this couldn't have been more made for you. It's the Make It by Mario Master Matte Palette. I've actually spent so much more time than I was expecting. <laughs> just been having a big chat so um i'm gonna kind of have to race through this i'm gonna begin with the peaches um papyrus eyeliner and then i'm gonna start with some of this lighter shade um i don't know if i pronounced that correctly but i was just having this conversation with someone this week you should never tease someone for pronouncing something incorrectly because it means that they learned it by reading it so <laughs> There we go, just in defence of my own mispronunciation there. Um, I'm actually running out of time now, but basically today I'm going to see um, Baz Luhrmann's Great Gatsby, one of my faves. It's on at the cinema in Birmingham. They did like a whole Baz Luhrmann weekend. I haven't been here, I only got here yesterday. Um, so I've caught Gatsby today, which I'm really excited about. So I thought I would do just a really classic, timeless, um, I feel like the 20s deserves its own moment. I'll have to revisit this. But for a little minute, I'm taking a soft wash all over the lids and tying it up with that liner. A really fluffy brush. I think this is one of Sarah Keary's. Yes, Sarah Keary, um, Irish makeup artist has beautiful brushes. I've been using them for a little while now and they wash really well. She's created really user-friendly shapes um, that just seem to do the work for you. Like, look at that blending. Took me all of two seconds. Thank God for Sarah Keary when you're running late for the cinema. Um, but I am literally just gonna do like a soft Gatsby-esque wash. I've literally got like my exercise trousers on. <laughs> I need to throw my clothes on and everything. So this really is gonna come to a bit of a dramatic close. I just checked the time and kind of got the shock of my life, to be honest with you. I'm gonna take the smaller end of this brush and a darker brown. And this will actually now look lovely with the pop of that liner. The white really helps to bring it out. And I'm going to wing out these edges. Now, 
Now, one thing I'm just kind of actually having an internal monologue with myself over is that nothing will like mess your makeup up more than rushing. So yes, I'm in a bit of a rush now and I'm running late, but if I just try and stay calm and finish it, that will garner better results than trying to rush through it. Because when you try and rush, you're going to mess it up so badly anyway that you'll be even more late. So trying to keep my cool here. And I'm just going to wing that out slightly with the shadow. <laughs> Look at me like smiling, delighted at how that's turned out. But I am. I feel like I'm doing quite well here, given that we're in a bit of a rush. And sometimes, depending on um, your fine lines in the outer corners of your eyes, sometimes it can work a bit better to go backwards on yourself than flicking outwards. I am going to do a little kind of kick out there. But to build a good bit of that coverage, I'm just going to work inwards as well. You might not necessarily need the thickness is to be the same on both sides. I did a video about this a while ago. I think it's in the At Home Beauty School playlist on this channel. But if your eyes aren't 100% symmetrical, then you can taper your makeup slightly. I'm going to add a bit of darker brown here to just um, help you to balance it out that way. Um, so actually, a lot of the time with my liners... They're not quite a perfect match, but my eyes aren't a perfect match, so it doesn't really matter. Like I've got a completely different um, contact lens prescription in each eye. <laughs> this, this video's turning into chaos. You didn't need to know that. I'm sorry. I think it's just like the anxiousness now of being late for the cinema. My friend who I'm going with, I'm always late and I've really been making a really conscious effort not to be late for him. Um, so I'm like, I have to be on time. I feel like I'm really redeeming myself. Right. Creamy pencil. I had a question about this somewhere. Nick, you said you want to stop your mascara smudging during the day under your eye. It wasn't to do with the pencil, but it was to do with smudging. Um, Nick, I want you to switch to a tubing mascara. I'm not going to use that today because I want something quite volumising. And I feel like with the tubing mascaras, even though they're great that you can rely on them to be smudge resistant, they're just not the best for volume. Um, please switch to that. And also what I'm going to do here is set this liner now with a darker shadow. Hang on, I'm just going to look into my um, bigger mirror to do that side because it's always a bit more fiddly. See now, because this has a really creamy texture, if I go over it with a little bit of a dark shadow, same brush, it just helps that you've got the creaminess that you want to play with your liner, but then you're setting it into place that it's not going to move on you. Just getting a bit closer in. And this doesn't look good for the video. But like if you were doing it at home. A tiny little pull. To get that liner right into those nooks and crannies. Can make a huge difference to how clean the overall look is. I'm taking a slightly more angled brush. This is a Fenty Beauty brush and I'm just going to finish by kicking that out so that it meets that lovely soft brown. Okay, very quickly, the Beauty Pie Triple Beauty Luminising Wand. What I wanted to do for this look, I'm going to do like a really red lip. And so I didn't want loads of blusher, but I wanted this skin, here we go, to still have a little touch of something. So I'm going to take a little bit of this on the high points of the skin. And I'm checking I haven't got any dark shadow excess on my finger. But I'm just going to tap that in. See how now the cheeks have a little bit of dimension 
um, but it's nothing too bold. Nice thick layer of the Rare Beauty Mascara. And then on the bottom, I've got some tweezers handy. I'm gonna pinch the lashes in little clumps so that it gives this kind of um, full slash effect. Okay, if we're going to the Roaring Twenties, we're gonna need a red lip. So I'm gonna start with one of the Half Magic Sculptitude liners and a nice cherry red. This is actually called Fancy Cherry. And then I'm following up with the Half Magic Mouth Cloud in Edward's Fantasy. And there we go. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, please feel free to send in any requests of things that you want to see in a video. I've been away for a few weeks with one thing and another. So I've got a lovely list for myself for this week of things to work through and show you. Um, so feel free to get any requests in. But thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and I'll chat to you soon.